to uh, see everything um, and take your sweet time, watch it a million times every day, of course. Um, and, uh, but if anything goes wrong um, on your end and you can't see things, you can always go back and watch the video. So we like to keep that all very uh, accessible. Winter and very cold in Cape Town, excellent. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, excellent. Um, we also uh, have a question from people. So we are not having everybody, we are keeping everybody muted just permanently because uh, that was the only way to really keep the uh, background noise down. Uh, and so if you would like to ask us questions, you can do that in the chat. Um, and again, you, you can message me privately. We will have time for a few questions at the end of the webinar just to let you know. There's the chat, um, <laughs> indeed. Okay, just a minute here. All right, well, so while people are just coming, we'll, again, we'll start in about uh, just a minute or two. But uh, before we properly start, I'm just going to put um, our various uh, website information and social media stuff into the chat. Those are all of the various ways that you can contact us and consume our content. So Research ILD, uh, there's the Research ILD uh, website right there. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. And then of course, what we're here for mostly, Smarts Online, that's the website right there. Also, I would really direct, uh, I would direct you to the Smarts YouTube channel. So um, all of our past free webinars are up on the Smarts YouTube channel. They are available. You can watch them anytime you like. So we have a whole playlist of those. There's 10 maybe right now, something like that. Um, we also have uh, lots of little short videos about specific executive function uh, strategies and theory. And those are really nice, like digestible bite-sized pieces. They're good for teachers and students. So just a lot of content there and it's just all open. So we, uh, you can join us there. Also, uh, there's the Smarts Twitter account, um, which we post lots of things about inter interesting articles um, out in the world about education, as well as that's how you get all the best quickest updates about our various conferences and webinars like this, things like that. Um, and then the Research ILD Facebook page, which is really the Smarts Research ILD Facebook page. It's kind of all together. And we post, again, a lot of things there. It's a great way to contact teachers, certainly. So yeah, um, we're also, as people were coming in, okay, we're just about started. Hello. Um, my name's Elizabeth Ross. Uh, I am one of your hosts today. Uh, so, however, I am also going to be playing your sort of background tech support for today. So let me just get a few little business things out of the way, and then we'll go ahead and start the webinar proper. So if you're having trouble with Zoom, 99% of the time you can fix that by closing Zoom and then opening again and rejoining the meeting. Um, if that doesn't work, close your entire web browser and then close any other programs that are running in the background of your computer, restart Zoom, rejoin the meeting. If that doesn't work, restart your computer and then open Zoom back up and rejoin. You'll be able to do that, no problem. Um, if you still are having an issue after that, you can private message me in the chat. I'm Research ILD Elizabeth Ross and I will do everything I can to fix it. As I was just saying, we are having a recording of this webinar, which we will be sharing the link with you um, at the in the next day or two. And so you can always go back and you can watch anything uh, that you missed if you have technical issues or if you just wanna go back and consume it at your leisure. There's a lot of information to cover. We tend to go pretty fast. So just so that you're aware of that. Um, also, we'll be offering you uh, at the end of this, we'll be offering you a PDF of the PowerPoint that we'll be using during this webinar so that you can have that uh, for your records. And uh, a few other things in the chat. I'm just going to post it one more time. Um, here is all our various uh, social media links. Uh, so we would love it if you contacted us um, at any of these various places. Um, let me just go through a little bit to tell you exactly kind of what these are. So first, on in the, the first link that I have in the chat there is Research ILD. Research ILD, the Research Institute for Learning and Development, is Smart's parent company. So um, Smart's is run through there, and it's really it's an amazing resource for research about executive function and all sorts of strategies. So it's a great website to check out. Under that is the Smart's Online website um, that has the full Smart's curriculum. 
And we'll be talking a lot about that today, of course. Um, and then we have the SMARTS YouTube channel, which has a lot of great resources, including free webinars, the SMARTS Twitter, and the uh, Research ILD Facebook page. Um, so a few other things as we go through. Uh, so I wanted to uh, let you know, so at the end of this webinar, we will be sending you an email that will have the recording of this webinar. It will have an evaluation for you to fill out. Um, if you fill out this evaluation, and we would honestly love it if you did, uh, because we really want to make this a special, uh, our webinars going forward, we really want to make them special and make sure that they are really serving all teachers and we need your feedback to improve. Um, so if you fill that out, you will get um, an email saying that you attended this webinar and you'll also get a free lesson. If you need a certificate that says, I went to this webinar, once you fill out the evaluation, um, you'll have the option to tell us you want a certificate. Those certificates are $15 extra. Um, just email us about that and we can work that out. Uh, so, um, and then before, before we get on here, um, I just wanted to tell you about our SMARTS Summer Summit. So this is basically, this is a used to be an in-person training, but obviously we're not doing those things now. So now it's gonna be entirely online. I'm gonna put the information for it in the chat right here. Um, and uh, it's going to, uh, it's really, really exciting. And uh, we're going to have uh, lots of fabulous programming. Um, and I am going to, hold on a second, let me, Find them. I'm going to put that link in there as well. Um, and it uh, right now, though, I really want to let you know about it because usually it is uh, $425, but right now we're having early bird special um, by July uh, uh, 17th. It is going to be only $400, and if you're a smart subscriber, it's $379. So um, I just wanted to let you know about that because it's an expiring offer. Um, and then also, of course, we have uh, the SMARTS, uh, the SMARTS curriculum. So that's where we're really here to talk about that. So the SMARTS curriculum is uh, 30 lessons. We have entire elementary curriculum, which we're going to talk about today. And then we have the secondary curriculum. So each of them have 30 lessons. They have all the supporting worksheets and materials and PDFs and there's videos. Absolutely everything about that. I'm going to put the link to that in the chat. Um, and that is, uh, you, if you subscribe to that, it's subscription is for a year. Um, and that is something also that, again, we'll talk a little bit more about the end of this webinar. And uh, we can also take questions about that. So have I missed anything? My fellow hosts. I think you did great. All right, all right. So in that case, I think that I will uh, I will turn this over. Oh, so at this point in time, um, we're, again, we're keeping everybody muted. If you could turn your cameras off for the duration of the webinar, just we're decreasing visual stimulation and distraction as we go forward. Thank you so much. But again, I do love to see your lovely faces. All right, so I think that I, we will go ahead and begin and take it away, Shelley. Hi, um, thank you, Elizabeth, for putting out the, the whole webinar there. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you um, today, this morning. Not the morning everywhere, I suppose. I'm Shelley Levy. I work for the Research Institute of Learning and Development. I work as part of the SMARTS team as a curriculum coordinator and teacher trainer. And I also work on the ILD side as an educational specialist. I've been in special education for over 30 years and I'm currently working with students. My youngest is a third grader. Yeah, I'm gonna see tomorrow morning. And my oldest uh, are, is a college student, so that's that. So I want to share my screen with you so that, um, so that you will have the PowerPoint. So just give me a second to do that. And while she's doing that, I'm just gonna say a quick hello and then I'm gonna sneak, I'm gonna hide, um, turn off my video. So my name is Michael Greshler, I'm the SMARTS director. I work closely with Elizabeth and Shelley to get SMARTS out. I'm so excited to be sharing this. You know, what a crazy time this is for educators. Um, but I do really feel that SMARTS is kind of uniquely positioned mm -hmm. as a tool that you can use either remotely or in person. 
um, and executive function, we know how important it's be become. So, you know, Shelly is going to be doing the heavy lifting on the elementary curriculum, but I'm going to be lurking in the chat and I am so happy to answer any questions. Um, and, you know, don't forget, this is an ongoing conversation. We're going to give you some great ideas today, but don't hesitate to reach out moving forward as well. So I'm just going to hide myself and um, you can take it away, Shelly. Um, oh, there you go. You're good now. Goodness. Yes, it worked when I tried it before. Wonderful. Okay, great. So we're here today to talk about executive function in the elementary school and to talk about the SMARTS approach. So the agenda for today is going to be, I'm going to talk a little bit about what is exactly is executive function and why do our students struggle so much with it? I'm going to go through the structure of the SMARTS elementary curriculum and share with you the three tiers of, of executive function delivery that we may want to consider for your schools and classrooms and then end with five steps. What are the five steps we can use tomorrow, starting tomorrow, to get started on this executive function journey? So Elizabeth was kind enough, whoops, I do that all the time, so sorry. Elizabeth was kind enough to talk about, wait, I just wanna move, sorry, I wanna move. Uh, hmm, I just wanna get the pictures out of the way here. There we go, thank you. Kind enough to mention Research Institute of Learning Development, Research ILD, and really our mission for the Institute is uh, we believe we want to reach all learners. And we believe that one way to do that and to promote success is to teach explicit strategies for executive function for our students because we know we need they need them for school and we know they need them to be successful in life. So Dr. Lynn Meltzer is our president and director of the Institute. She is our EF guru. Um, and it's really based on her research and her work that the SMARTS uh, curriculums exist. She has many years of clinical work and research. She's, she's famous for presentations and she's written many books. Um, and these are three of my favorites. The green one in particular, executive, promoting executive function in the classroom is as very teacher friendly and I find it uh, very accessible and um, a very wonderful resource to use if you're trying to figure out how to teach executive function in the classroom setting. Elizabeth mentioned this, but I'll mention it again. We have uh, our online executive function summer summit starting soon on July 28th. It's four sessions, 10 to 1230, and it's going to be led by Dr. Melser and other colleagues at our institute, really focusing on the systematic and motivational approaches to teaching executive function strategies explicitly so that our students will learn how to learn in any type of learning environment. And it's quite worthwhile and hope you check out the link a little bit later. And then we have our yearly uh, learning differences conference again online. It's gonna be October 9th and 10th this year with um, many, many kind of famous speakers. I, I, I myself attended before I worked at Research ILD, attended every year of the conference. It happens to be 10 minutes from my house. And I loved it so much because all the journals I was getting as a special educator, I was able to actually see those people and was able to hear from them and see them on Zoom about hearing about their research and all the important work. So SMARTS Online. So SMARTS stands for Strategies, Motivation, Awareness, Resilience, talents, and success. And it's a research-based strategy instruction curriculum which promotes the lifelong strategic and self-aware of learning. A bit about the history of SMARTS, and as of today, SMARTS has reached and been used by over 2,000 educators across the United States and in over 17 countries. We even have representation today from other countries listening in. Glad to have you. Uh, many countries, Australia, England, Panama, Colombia, very, very exciting. And we've really grown into a comprehensive K-12 executive function solution, which is now used in a wide range of education settings. So Smart Secondary, Elizabeth mentioned before, was created about six years ago by Michael Greshlow and the team, the Smart's team at that time. And I came in contact with it at one of the Harvard Learning Differences conferences. They had a session promoting this new executive function program. They hadn't quite gotten it out there yet. 
and I heard about it. At the time, I was a director of support services at a private school. And we had been struggling with our middle schoolers. How do we reach the students? And I was teaching executive function in student support groups, but uh, I heard about the smart secondary curriculum and I was so excited. I could not believe it, that there was this curriculum made for exactly what we needed to do. So uh, went home that weekend and Monday morning, marched into my principal's office saying, you're not gonna believe what I have. Oh, by the way, at the time it was a Kickstarter, so I was able to buy the curriculum, so I had it in hand, ready to, ready to show her. And we were able to work with the middle school team, particularly with the sixth grade team. They were on board with it, and in particular, a social studies teacher uh, was able, allowed us to carve out space within his curriculum once a week. He had the students four times a week to teach this executive function curriculum so that all of our sixth graders could, could be part of it. Very exciting. So that segueing into the history of Smarts Elementary. So I came on board Research Oddly about, about three years ago, and we kept hearing at conferences, professional development opportunities, hey, what about us? All the elementary teachers were saying, okay, you've got Smart Secondary, but we need it. We probably need it even more in, ele in elementary school. And fortunately, uh, in 2017, 2018, we had a Smart curriculum team. I was part of it, Michael Grush, the Smarts director was part of it, Wendy Spacey, our reading director, and Kathy Button, another ed specialist, along with some amazing interns. We, we were together, had a lot of fun, created lessons and activities. And then the next step was to pilot it in 2018-19, which we uh, were piloting it with 10 schools across the country. It was taught in over 30 classrooms in grades two to five. And we had a kind of a year long connection with these schools and the teachers, of course, having feedback, check-ins, uh, there were written evaluations, interviews of the teachers and represent, representative students from each classroom in order to make the SMART curriculum as it is today. Around the same time, I was very fortunate to be part of SMARTS After the Bell where I was teaching an after-school service learning program in conjunction with the Boys and Girls Club to fourth and fifth graders. And these students had been recommended to this after school program by the school counselors and by their teachers. They were just a fantastic group of kids. And the SMARTS um, curriculum was really the perfect vehicle to approach a service learning program model. And the kids knew that they were part of this pilot and they were there to help me and they loved taking on that role of giving their ideas and, uh, and pointing out my mistakes. It was, it was really, really quite wonderful. They researched, they uh, researched their community, they researched their school, and they came up with two larger programs that they ended up implementing. One was Students Love Pets, and one was for an organization called PAWS, P-A-W-S. It was a cat shelter and fostering program, and they had a drive for items that they, that center needed. And they also then decided in terms of looking at the community, they worked for a clothing drive for a local hom homeless shelter. And you'll see them in the picture, they also made blankets. And we had the representatives from both of the organizations coming in to speak with the students, to engaging with them, teaching them about their different centers. And the students were able to prepare questions ahead of time. Ahead of time. And through the SMARTS, lessons able to really take charge. They made the flyers, they went to the classrooms, made announcements, etc. It was really, really quite, quite wonderful and rewarding. Um, and so SMART is never stagnant. We are always hard at work trying to improve and making the lessons even more relevant. We've just been working on, we call it SMART 2.0, to release some new exciting updates for the teachers and the curriculum the strategies, we're always looking at ways for making it culturally inclusive. How do we engage students, of, of, of all students, and also trying to meet the needs of the high performing students, and helping our teachers really create the lessons that they need for their students to succeed. So let me chat briefly about, well, what does it we mean when we talk about executive function? So if you were to Google executive function, you'd find many, many different terms different definitions. So it really depends upon what researcher you're talking about in terms of what their definition of executive function will be. 
Um, and you are all very lucky because I'm going to be sharing with you what we feel is the best definition of executive function, and I'll explain why that is the best. So the definition we like to use is executive function is a broad term used to describe the complex cognitive processes that are the foundation of our goal-directed behaviors. And this is the best definition of executive function because it's the most concrete version. When we talk about executive function, we need to talk about the things that we can observe in our students' behavior, and observe in the things that they are doing. We want to find, we want the definition to be concrete for them. So SMARTS breaks down executive function into these five areas in order to identify how executive function impacts our students' lives. We want it to be concrete and visible to our students. So we teach them when we go over the areas of organizing, the ability to categorize and sort information, as well as organizing time and organizing materials. And we teach goal setting, helping our students be able to set realistic goals and the steps they need to take those goals, as well as the obstacles they should consider while achieving those goals. We, we go into shifting flexibly, being able to look at a particular situation or a task in a slightly different manner, to be able to approach it differently and try something else. We go into remembering strategies and the ability to access our working memory because we're juggling so much important information. And also self-monitoring and self-checking. When we're doing a task or an activity, being able to kind of look at what we're doing, think about what we're doing, is if we're doing it in the right way, and then being able to check along the way and also when we complete completed a task to see and recognize some of our area's most common mistakes. So in this way, this, these are things that the students can understand, we can show them and we can see, and they can improve upon. So all of the processes are connected, all of those processes are connected to this one other area that wasn't on the, on the COGS, but is really is just as important. And that's the whole idea of self-awareness and metacognition, thinking about ourselves as learners and understanding, getting a deep understanding of our strengths and our challenges. So uh, it's important for the students to have this self-understanding. If I teach my students a strategy and they, they do the strategy, they do everything they're told, but they don't ever stop and think about what they did, why they did it, and why that strategy could possibly be helpful to them in the future, then then we're not really getting at the teaching of executive function. Executive function is activated, it's turned on when the student knows what their goal is and they have an understanding of how they learn best. So this is very, very key. So we have to activate the student's understanding and constantly come, be in, come, come back to this metacognition, this self-awareness, this self-understanding. How can I use this strategy? When is a strategy gonna be helpful for me in the future? So that's the smart, SMARTS paradigm. Metacognition, I start with myself, I have a sense of my learning profile. What are my strengths? What are my challenges? What strategies can help me be more successful with a particular task? When and how do I use them? And when I'm doing that and I'm meeting with success, I will be more motivated, have more effort, be able to put, more, put forth more effort, and the students will have a greater sense of confidence, stronger self-concept, which again feeds back into a greater understanding of themselves. So executive function does not live in a vacuum. It's part of this whole process of metacognition, increasing effort and motivation, more positive self-concept, which is gonna to lead to even greater understanding. All right. So, oh, this is, this is really wild graphics here. Just, so here is this poor student. He is being bombarded, bombarded by executive function tasks. So why? Why do our students struggle so, so much with executive function? Well, it could be partially because they might have some learning issues, attention deficit order. It might be partially because they're just middle schoolers and middle schoolers struggle with executive function. But we want to look at the context in which the students are in. So they're, as the EF, as executive functions demands increase, they're going to struggle more. And in addition to that, they're faced with all these technological <laughs> technological things. Oh my goodness. 
just being bombarded with technology. So executive function is really developing differently now because technology. I, I look at, I see these toddlers and they're sometimes around the phones and they're on the tablets. So our brains have many, many distractions with technology. And I think sometimes we as adults have that as well. So these poor students are really being drenched. They're being bombarded by high NEF demands, tasks that are too difficult for them to handle. They're being distracted by all the technology and all the demands that are being placed on them. And they're, they're really get it being lost and just, just falling apart. They're, they're becoming stuck. So our students may be very stuck, smart, but they get blocked. They get stuck. They get stuck because of all the demands. And it's a paradigm we like to call the clogged funnel. This is Dr. Meltzer's favorite paradigm of executive function difficulties. So these are students have, they may have the ability, they may have the knowledge to do the task, but we're not seeing them being able to produce. We're not seeing them be able to perform because they're stuck. There's just too much in their funnel. It's totally clogged. Now, I don't know if, if this rings a bell with any of you, if any of you, are, you see this in any of your students, if you do feel free to, to comment in the chat. But so our students are stuck and we need to help them. We need to do something. And that's where the teaching of explicit executive function strategies can help our students get unstuck to help them unclog the funnel. So this brings me to an interesting question. What exactly should our students be able to do independently? What should they do with, be able to do with guidance and support? And what are some of the things that are just beyond their current abilities? I want to share with you this chart. It's the, the, the developmental aspects of executive function. It's the zone of proximal development chart. And it's sorting tasks based on whether students are developmentally unable to do certain tasks yet, whether they can do the task with support of a teacher, parent, or peer, or whether they can do this task independently. So I'm gonna uh, have a very, very short survey. I might have Elizabeth have you do. And Elizabeth, do you need me anything to do for that? Oh, that's good. So right. um, in the chat, I have just posted um, a link to, we're gonna do a Google form together. So uh, I know it's different for everybody's computer. Some people you can just click on the link and it goes to it. Other people you have to copy the link and put it into um, a browser uh, window to fill that out. Um, but while we're doing that, I am going to share my screen here. So this is what uh, the, the survey looks like. So while people are getting that up and putting in their, their uh, responses, we'll just go through it briefly. So what can our students do in school? This is the teacher edition. So five-year-olds should be able to create and maintain um, organizational systems. You think we, they can't do that yet? They can do it with support or they can do it independently. So each of these questions is the same. Seven-year-olds should, uh, uh, students should be able to create and maintain organizational sy uh, systems. Do you think they can't do it yet? They can do it with support, can do it independently. And then nine-year-olds and 11-year-olds. So yeah, so we'll see what's going on with that. Um, and all right, we've got about 13 responses, 15. Okay, let's go take a look at it. All right, and this is the coolest thing about Google Forms is that they make these amazing pie charts here. So I'll hand it back over to you, Shelly. Okay, so let's see what, what, what the people, what, what you said. So five-year-olds, can I do this? Um, so most of you said, 53% said, no, not yet. Okay, kindergartners, that's true. That's true, we have a lot of organizational systems and have those kindergarten rooms, those cubbies and their boxes and all of that. Uh, let's see what the seven-year-olds, so maybe first grade, um, yeah, so first grade, there's a little bit of a difference in the saw from kindergarten for second grade. So with support, with teacher modeling and teacher support, 83%, that's pretty high. We feel that we can do it. There's still going to be some that can't do it yet, and, there, and there, there's a few that can also do it independently. All right, nine-year-olds, roughly third grade, let's see. Uh, similar, similar to the seven-year-olds, seven about 80% with some teacher support. Um, we don't have anyone saying here, can't do it all, can't do yet, but 
but can be, and so it's either with teacher support or independently. All right, you see a slight shift and what do we see with 11 year olds? Okay. Oh, now this is so interesting. Hmm. So the students are older. Okay, so we saw for the nine year olds that 83% said with teacher support. 11 year olds are a little bit older, fifth grade, I'm thinking fifth grade here. And 68% um, can do independently, can do independently. And 28% with support. Okay, so they're older, they've had more experience, um, they're better able, better able to do it with support. Kind of makes sense. So thank you, Elizabeth. Thanks for that. All right, and I am stopping my screen share and handing it back to you. Okay, now do I need to share my screen again? Yes. I do. Wonderful. And let's see, did that work? It yeah. did, you're good. So wonderful, great. So thank you for doing that. And um, I just wanted to do one activity. We could, we could have done it with many, many activities, but for time, I just wanted to have, think, have you think about a skill and whether in which category, which tier you feel your students are in. And I am, um, I'm gonna try that again. So just bear with me, please. I'm, oh, here we go. Did the space bar, it's working now. All right, I'm gonna go on to the next slide. So um, when there's something a student cannot do, what I'd like us to think about, when there's something a student cannot do, a task we've given them and they can absolutely cannot do it, it probably means that the demands of the task are outpacing the strategies they have at their disposal. Because that's really, really important. So if you look in that middle, middle area, the zone of proximal development. So it's certainly appropriate for us to give it, be giving our students tasks with high expectations, with high demands. Of course, we wanna help them grow and develop. But if they are not able to meet those demands, then the tasks, the demands of the tasks are outpacing their strategy. That means we need to be teaching them explicitly the strategies they need to use in order to be successful, because that's where we want them to be. So if they can't do yet, we want to get them in the zone of proximal development. And the way to do that is to explicitly teach those strategies. And then ultimately, we want them in the category of being independent with those strategies. So there are many factors that can contribute to a clogged funnel. And in many times, it's really all three of these. So you have the individual students and their abilities, uh, in which case they may have challenges, they may have of uh, 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 learning issues, possibly. But then we have to look at the demands of the task, the EF, the executive function demands of the task. The task might be too, too difficult for them at that point in time because they don't have the strategies to deal with it. And then we also have the systems of a school, um, which could be anything from policies to scheduling. And then we've all just experienced remote learning, which Oh my goodness, I don't know. When I the remote learning, it was like the perfect storm of uh, you know, an EF nightmare for parents, for students, and for us teachers too on a certain level. So there are many areas where executive function can actually support this and unclog the top, uh, unclog the funnel of our students. So this brings me to the SMARTS approach, and I want to share with you uh, the SMARTS curriculum what it entails and how it's structured. So SMARTS Elementary has seven units and each unit has two to six corresponding lessons with PowerPoints and activity sheets. So our seven units, our first unit is an introduction to executive function strategies. And it's really the groundwork for all the other lessons. It teaches the students about executive function, what it is. It teaches them about their own strengths, their own challenges, um, and about metacognition and why strategy reflection is so important. And it teaches what a strategy is. So what is a strategy? What makes a strategy a strategy? Then we go on to unit two, which is goal setting. How do I achieve and set goals that make sense for myself? The third unit is cognitive flexibility. And we go on to organizing materials and time in unit four. Unit five is the organizing of information, the writing and note taking. 
Unit six is remembering strategies such as visualization, storytelling, cartoons, and association. And unit seven, we focus on self-monitoring and self-checking uh, in which we have some social emotional learning units in there. How do I manage my mood? What hat am I wearing? Works with perspective taking. So we have the seven units and each unit has two to five lessons and each lesson contains the strategies to, to focus on that particular area of executive function. This is cognitive flexibility, unit three. Our first lesson is being flexible and shifting expectations. We look at multiple meaning words. We look at understanding characters and their motives. Um, the second lesson is I'm wearing your shoes, one of my favorite, which focuses literally on perspective taking, perspective taking and being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes. And we've heard from teachers this lesson in protection in particular is great for perspective, perspective taking, but also for really helping the class bond together and being able to work collaboratively well. Our third lesson in cognitive flexibility is a very powerful strategy called skim and scoop, which teaches the students the ability to identify main ideas while reading a text. The fourth lesson is purposeful highlighting, which is identifying a strategy for identifying and retaining main ideas and detail, also a lot of fun, and shifting math, being able to recognize multiple meanings in math concepts. So we have seven units, each unit two to five lessons, and every lesson is divided into four modules. So how do we teach these strategies successfully? These four modules are, the first module is always, always an activator. We always start with an activator, some fun, engaging way to help the students understand the point of the strategy. And we always do this in a very fun way and get them kind of hooked and wanting to learn more about the strategy and use it. Then we go on to guided instruction, which is uh, guiding the students with teacher modeling, how we use the strategy successfully. And we do some activities together. Next, we allow the students to practice the strategy independently, with independent practice. And we always end with a metacognitive wrap-up. There's that word again, metacognition, a metacognitive wrap-up. We always end with a reflection. This is very, this is so key um, because the students need to know, well, and think about, okay, what did I learn and how can this help me? How can the strategy help me moving forward, know what I know, knowing what I know about my thought self as a learner. So we have the four modules and they last, each module will take about 20 minutes, approximately 20 minutes to teach. And the modules need to be taught in order, but you can group them in any way that makes sense for you and your students. So if you have 40 minutes, you might want to do the first two metacognitive activities where they're in guided instruction together, have 60 minutes the first three together, and then maybe the next day is a review for the strategy and then metacognitive wrap-up. Or we have teachers also being able to do all four components, all four modules in one setting. So it's, it's, there's a flexibility in terms of that. I, I didn't mention, so the modules need to be taught in the same order, but our lessons, our 30 lessons, do not need to be taught in order. In fact, we tell you to look at the lessons and decide what makes sense for you and your students, what areas of executive function you'd like to focus on, so, and, and pick and choose. So each lesson has a detailed, explicit lesson plan. It's very easy to read, it's scripted, it's very easy to follow. And connected with each lesson is a PowerPoint. There's 30 PowerPoints. And the PowerPoints are used to model the strategies with your students. You can choose to use them and not use them. And they're, they're very popular because they're very versatile. They're very flexible. You can change the PowerPoint any way you see fit, what makes sense for you. You can remove slides. You can change slides. You can remove pictures, add things to it. It's very, very, very flexible. Flexible. And each slide at the bottom of the of slide contains the teacher notes. So the same teach notes that were explicitly written in your lesson plan are transferred and also appear on the PowerPoint slide. So you don't need to be sitting there with the lesson plan and the PowerPoint. You can have that up and the important tips and the useful information is right there at the bottom. 
In addition, we have about 160 student handouts and they are fantastic. Here are a few of my favorite here, the star strategy and uh, draw a pig for teaching estimation. Our handouts are in PDF format. They can be downloaded, but since remote learning, we were able to have all of our handouts as fillable forms. So teachers have been able to use them on Google Classroom and have the students complete the forms uh, in a fillable way online. In addition, we do have a separate student workbook that contains all 160 handouts. And that's if you want to have a separate workbook, it's great for the students to have all the handouts in one place. Um, and also it's something you could probably, you, you, you can use multi-year. And this year I'm very excited. Last year we had the workbook and the pages were in black and white and this year we're able to have pages in color and it looks fantastic. And of course, of course we have plenty and plenty of strategy reflection sheets. So at the end of every lesson, there's a metacognitive wrap up and there's a strategy reflection. We have generic strategy reflection sheets and we also have specific strategy reflection sheets based on a particular lesson for you to choose and use with your students. And these are very, very important to save and use as a record and for data and to look back at what the students have learned over the year. Okay, additional features we have at the end of the lesson, at the, at the end of the, after the metacognitive wrap up, we have a strategy shout out, very popular, where students take turns in sharing their strategies with their pair, with their peers, with their students in the classroom. There are also extensions on many of their lessons. So after you've taught the strategy, if you want to review it, you want to do it, you want to have additional activities, we have ideas there for you that are easy to implement for you to use right then and there. And we have something called Bridge to Home. These are a handout for every unit on the strategies you learned. And it's a way to involve the home. It's a way for the students to bring home something to their parents or guardians and have a discussion of what they learned and also hear from their parent or guardian how they may approach a particular strategy. It's a nice way to have a connection and have a discussion of what is executive function and why it's important not only in school, but in home as well. When you um, sign up for the SMARTS curriculum, we have an extensive getting started packet uh, online as well with videos and information and blogs, as well as of, of ideas of how you would implement the program in terms of time, once a week, twice a week, 40 minute sessions, et cetera, as well as looking at your curricular needs and how you might group the lessons. So let's say you decided for the year you wanted to focus on social emotional outcomes. We've grouped the lessons that we think best address those needs. Maybe you want to prepare for projects. Maybe you want to work on the content, etc. So all of those tools are there for you to, to look at. All right, so let me share with you a little bit about where SMARTS Elementary, where and how SMARTS Elementary is, is and has been implemented. So this is uh, the tiers of executive function. This, these are the different levels and the different places where you might see someone bring SMARTS into their school. So we have students identified with executive function challenges, very commonplace entrance for SMARTS. We have academic context with high EF demands. And then we have uh, EF throughout the school, executive function throughout the school and the school systems. So looking at uh, bringing it in for, as, as part of special education and skill building, skill building, it would be for one on one or group, group instruction. This targets, it targets the student population who is at risk. It's typically delivered by support teachers and specialists. And it doesn't, this instruction doesn't really take place in the content area classrooms. Now the advantages are it's easy, easier to differentiate. There's already dedicated time built into the schedule to teach executive function. And some challenges might be that it might not have enough specific content and it may be harder to generalize. So bringing it in, bringing SMARTS in when the academic contexts have high executive function demands this is targeting academic tasks or transitions 
where the demands may exceed the capabilities of the average students. So examples of this were of during transition years, when you're doing project-based learning, when you're, we're switching from learning to read to reading to learn and standardized tests. So typically this can be delivered by the support and or content area teachers and the instruction can take place in either setting, support and or content area classrooms. So the advantages are there's a direct connection to the content, so there's carryover. There may be easier buy-in for your student and your teachers. Um, some of the challenges might be, it's harder to differentiate. Finding the time within the curriculum might be a challenge. And you want to make sure that the executive function is really being made specifically in the context area. So I wanted to show you, this is an example of a second grade teacher who teaches at a charter school in the San Francisco Bay Area. And he is teaching executive, fun has an executive function class. He's teaching all of his second graders for the year. So the picture on the left, I just love this, is his strengths board of his second graders. You can see they talked about metacognition, knowing your strengths and your challenges. And this is their strengths board. You have all sorts of strengths, jumping row, science, reading, sports, singing. It's just adorable. And, and on the right, what that is, is a, um, the unit two I mentioned talks about goal setting. And in our goal setting unit, we talk about something called a can-do goal, C-A-N-D-O. And we teach our students, what is a can-do goal? What is that? C standing for clear. I want to write a goal that's going to be clear and specific. Is it, I want it to be appropriate, appropriate for me. Uh, I wanted to include numerical, N for numerical, some, being able to measure in some way. D, doable. My goal has to have at least three doable steps. You say if you don't have three steps, it's not really a good goal. And the O for obstacles. I want to consider what obstacles might be in my way and then what am I going to do about it. So I love this. They did a class can-do goal, and you might not be able to read it, but this is a can-do goal for the class of stacking and un unstacking and stacking their chairs for 20 days in a row. And they just keep keeping track of that. And, uh, and one of the obstacles is the students go, well, what if I'm absent or what if we're on a field trip? And they talked out all of this and that's, that's their can-do goal. So even second graders can talk about executive function, they can think about executive function and they can, can create, create goals and follow through on them. We have been working uh, with Boston Public Schools here as part of their Excellence for All Project, EFA, to uh, prepare the students. Their goal is to prepare students to engage with challenging content at advanced levels through a capstone project. And at the end of the year, a um, so year-long project, very detailed, they, um, the students in the EFA schools presented their research project, projects at the annual showcase, and I was fortunate enough to attend, it was, it was mind blowing. It was amazing, truly, truly amazing. So we were able to work with the EFA Excellent for All staff and create the Scholars Teacher Guide to help them integrate the executive function strategies throughout the students' projects. So the teachers taught the executive function strategies explicitly to their students, and the students were then able to apply these strategies while they were completing the project. The project was broken down into the plan, do, and reflect. Very, very powerful. And it's a, 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 it shows when a, a whole system comes together what, what can be accomplished. Many advantages. We had administrators who were supporting this. Um, executive function was seen as everyone's responsibility. And uh, within this framework, we're able to provide the tier, different tiers of support. The challenges is it's very time intensive in order to do well. You have to find the time and the data collection is really crucial. This is an example of a district framework. This is a school in Robbinsville where um, the teachers did a, a identified needs assessment that we helped them with. And then the teachers and the administration came up with the outcomes they were looking for, and they allowed the outcomes with the tasks and the strategies in order to achieve the outcomes. 
So they spent the year piloting this program and you had gener general education teachers uh, on board, choosing their favorite things, favorite strategies, favorite ways of doing this. And then the next year, they were able to continue it and have the program grow with a new cohort of teachers. So this is an example of a school, a school coming together and smart personnel, Michael in particular, going in and really helping them crafting what their school needs, what they wanna do, and how they're gonna get there while with, with the teaching of the executive function curriculum. Okay, so I've given, I've spoken quickly, giving you a lot of information to think about. Let's talk about next steps. What are the five next steps that any of you can use to say, to get started with executive function and possibly bring it into your school and into your classroom? So first, you need to be able to identify and evaluate your, your, your club funnels. Where's the problem? What's going on? Think about what you need. Figure out the problem. So you might want to, to do a needs assessment. Uh, you want to uh, interview and, and involve all the stakeholders, certainly your teachers, administrators, staff, possibly parents. You want to look at that data. You want to figure out what areas of executive function you're most concerned with and start there. Next, you want to select the appropriate executive function resources. So you want to gather and get all the materials you think you're going to need to, to, to launch this program for the year. Certainly, Smarts Elementary, we feel, is the ideal tool to be able to start this venture of teaching executive function strategies um, to all of your students. And we would work with you in terms of determining what other factors you might be considering. It's very, it's very flexible. You might want to say, well, you know, we want the parents on board too. They're, they're important partners with us. So we want to somehow include them in this training, not only teacher training and student training, but maybe we want to have parent workshops. We want to get them involved in some way. So you want to gather all your resources and have that ready to go before you start. And you want to have a discussion discussion and be very strategic and sm start small. We never say teach all 30 lessons in the same year. We really want to start small so that you're going to be successful. Choose the goal. You might want to pilot it in a particular grade. You might want to get a particular cohort group of teachers who are really excited about teaching executive function together, deciding on um, which lessons to teach and how often to teach it. You might decide on two executive functions, lessons a month, etc. So start small, have a goal that you can accomplish so you're going to be successful with. And then of course you're going to want to collect data and again reflect what works, what worked, what didn't work, um, have some sort of formative data that could be through teacher reflections, student reflections, student portfolios, interviews, Etc. We want to gather all that information, look at the data, and say, okay, what needs to be changed? What needs to be tweaked? Because we want to keep on growing. We want to figure out, all right, this works. I want more people involved. We want more students involved, more teaching involved, and keep on growing. So it's important to don't let the, the momentum die down. You start and you want to keep on going. I will let, I'm, and oh, here. I'm just sharing, uh, this is my information. I know Elizabeth has put it in the chat and I'm sure she will do so again momentarily. I, we, love, we love mail, we love hearing from you. I know Michael's on, on board here. We love hearing from you, we wanna hear comments, questions, ideas, we are here for you. We feel that this is very powerful, this executive function and teaching these skills explicitly will help our students, particularly those who struggle succeed in school, but not only in school. These are actual schools that one needs to succeed in life. And we are here to help you along your journey. And I'm yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Shelly. Um, wonderful. And we'd love to hear from you. I'd love uh, questions. Indeed. Um, uh, so I have a few little business things uh, to, sure. to uh, chat about. And then um, after that, um, we'd love to have you have any questions for us. You can put them in the chat and we will answer them with the time permitting. So first off, 
I'm just putting in the chat is our training evaluation. So we will email this out to you as well. But if you're the type of person who likes to get tasks out of the way, you can fill it out right now. Um, again, this is really important for us because uh, we are always striving to make our webinars uh, the best that they can be. And especially trying to reach people online and with the people's changing needs, we really want uh, to make sure that we're getting that feedback. Also, when you fill out that uh, training evaluation, um, of course, you will get a free lesson from um, this entire curriculum. And uh, you also get an email that says that you participated in this webinar. Again, if you um, need a certificate uh, that says that you participated in this webinar, that is an extra $15 when you fill out that evaluation. I think you can click a thing that says that. Yeah, you can click it. And so just to be clear on that piece, if you fill out the evaluation, you'll get an email that says, thank you so much for attending this thing. So. That is proof of attendance. But if you need the fancy uh, certificate with your name on it, there is a $15 charge for that just because of the time and organizational stuff that it takes. But otherwise, just fill out the evaluation and you'll still get that email that says, thank you for attending in case you wanna just use that. Exactly. Um, and then also, uh, as people have asked for, this is the, uh, the PDF of the PowerPoint that Shelly just used. Feel free to download that, it's, it's yours. Um, and so I know a lot of people really like to, like to have that. Um, and then uh, briefly, just briefly, um, I want to go over uh, uh, what we were talking about a little bit before the SMART Summer Summit, um, because the SMART Summer Summit um, is uh, happening, it is starting uh, on July 28th, it's July 28th, 30th, August 4th, and 6th. It's going to have many sessions all about executive function and, um, uh, and SMART. So this is Summer Summer Summit. SMART Summer Summit. Um, so right now it is, um, <laughs> um, it's the, right now we are having early bird special. So that is only until Friday. So that uh, price is $3.99. Uh, the usual fee is $425. So I wanted to make sure that all of you knew about that because uh, there's a time limit on it. And then, of course, um, the major thing that we're talking about here is the SMARTS Elementary curriculum. So I will put um, a link to that also in the chat. Um, and we have a great question coming up. I'll get to that in just one second. Um, and then also, I just wanted to let you know that uh, if you uh, haven't got enough of our beautiful faces, um, Michael will be doing a this basically very similar webinar to this one on Thursday that's just about uh, the uh, SMART secondary curriculum. So um, if you're interested in that, of course, you're welcome to, uh, we would love to have you. Um, and I will put that into the chat as well. Um, we, uh, mess it, we, we mentioned briefly that we are also having um, our Learning Differences Conference, which is in October. Um, and we will be sending out uh, a, we, we will also put the sort of links to that if you're interested in it, uh, into the email and into the chat. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I, yeah, you want to, go ahead, Shelly, go ahead. So, so I'm, I'm looking at a question here from Pamela Sweeney, and I want to make sure I understand it correctly. Correctly, she writes, any thoughts on the transition? Oops, we just moved. Oh, yeah. Any thoughts on the transition between using the strategy in the elementary curriculum to an older classroom? Now, if you're, if you're, so I, what I'm interpreting this to mean is you are teaching students who are actually in middle school or high school, but their um, ability or their reading ability is at a lower grade level, possibly third or fourth grade. Interestingly, that you should bring that up. Because in fact, we were faced with that this year. I, we, I, I also do teacher coaching with some of our schools and we, I was working with teachers who were middle school teachers and they had the secondary curriculum. And we quickly found out that because their students re were reading at a third, second, third grade level, it made no sense for them to use the secondary curriculum. So we quickly switched them over to the elementary curriculum. Now, if I've gotten that right, great. Pamela otherwise um, clarifies. So yes, yes. I mean, it, so we did, so these teachers, these four teachers in particular, used our elementary curriculum for their sixth and seventh graders because that is where they were at and that's what made sense. So I hope I got that. Yes, I think we have an answer, uh, answer for that. Also, just to 
let you know, of course. Um, if you're, uh, if you have questions about the SMARTS program or anything, we are real people and you can contact us. Um, we, we love to chat with people. We make, uh, if you're a school administrator and you want to talk sort of nuts and bolts about how to do a lot of SMARTS curricula, uh, SMARTS, uh, subscriptions, you can just email us. You can talk to us and, uh, we make sort of arrangements with people on a regular basis. Yeah, absolutely. Just to um, jump on that. So especially, you know, Shelly talked about how the entire curriculum is kind of modular. You can kind of pick and choose lessons and develop these customized scopes and sequence. That's a wonderful thing, but it also might feel like work to you. We provide support on that. There's a getting started packet that Shelly pointed out. There's also a getting started survey that we will send you two pages of suggestions from where to start. And even beyond that, I, we will get on the Zoom. We will spend half an hour with you, mm -hmm. making sure you understand how to get your materials, how to teach them, et cetera. So, you know, you see these friendly people, that is who we are. We love EF, we are here for you um, as you kind of embark on this EF journey. Uh, so, you know, definitely don't be strangers. I think you saw Shelly's email, we'll include it again. I'm gonna send out a less um, a follow-up later today with the recording of this webinar, as well as the PDF of the PowerPoint, as well as the evaluation, as well as Shelly's email. So yes, um, you will definitely have everything you need to reach out with your questions. Um, we will support you in that process of customizing this, um, you know, especially in this interesting year that's coming up. Yeah, I, I really wanna encourage everyone, uh, I know Elizabeth mentioned it and I forgot to mention it before, but you know, Look, if you haven't already looked at the Smarts Elementary free lesson, look at it, download it, look at it, because I, I, I think it's, it's really the best way to get a sense and a feel for what the lessons look like. Yep. Um, and then just as we finish up, I'm just going to put a few of our links into the chat. So that's the Smarts Online link. Everything Smarts you need is there. Um, and that's where you can find out all the information about both the curriculums. There's all of our contact info is there. We have a blog that we update every uh, every week that has lots of interesting information about SMARTS, but also just about the wider world of executive function. Um, and uh, that's a really great free resource. So we encourage people to go there as well. And as we said before, I really want to highlight uh, our YouTube channel. Oh, thank you for yeah. watching. Um, um, again, because if you found this uh, webinar useful, we have been doing a series of free webinars uh, all through the summer, um, ones that go actually much more sort of into the nitty gritty and depth uh, things about executive function, and they're all up on our YouTube channel, and you can just watch them. So, um, any final questions before we finish up? Okay. Uh, do we have a parent price option for the 35th annual uh, Learning Differences Conference in October? I do not think we do. No, not currently, no. Um, um, yeah, stay tuned. We're working on, you know, thinking about how to support parents. Um, but that conference has typically not been aimed at parents, has been aimed more at educators. But stay tuned. I mean, we have been asked that before. So we're trying to wrap our minds around that. Indeed. And of course, it's virtual this year. So that's a whole new experience for us, which we're hoping we can really um, help reach out to people who can't make their way to Massachusetts for a conference. So, I mean, that's the silver lining of having to do this online is that we talk yep. more to all of you who can't necessarily travel. Um, okay, sorry, I missed it. Where there'll be a separate intro webinar for the secondary curriculum. There will be, it's this Thursday with- This Thursday, um, yeah. With Michael. So um, that is- Same time, same time. Same time, indeed. Yep. Um, and uh, so I will actually, I'll put that again in the chat. And of course, we will email this to you as well. So it's a similar Absolutely. thing, um, but uh, it's, it's, uh, but it's, yeah, specifically about the secondary curriculum. Yep, yep. Um, and just in terms of follow-up, so I see the, the evaluations are coming in. Thank you so much. Uh, for those of you requesting a free lesson, we are, you will, we will send it to you. I hope to get that to you by Thursday. It may be Friday the latest, just because we're juggling a few things. But don't worry, you will get uh, everything you want and more and reach out with your questions. And we just really appreciate you taking this time on this uh, summer day. And thank you to Shelly and Elizabeth. Um, excellent work. You guys are great. Well, thank you indeed. All right, excellent. Oh, wonderful. We'd love to see you on Thursday. Um, excellent, wonderful. Okay, um, I think we are all set.
Thank you all very much. We hope you have a lovely day and we'll be in touch with that follow-up email shortly. Great. All right. Bye. Bye.